Happy New Year from Las Vegas. But before we go full speed ahead on 2023, this is the show to look back and celebrate the best of a record-setting year in 2022. Legendary action went down inside the octagon, delivering moments that will last forever. This is UFC Honors, presented by Toyo Tires. Welcome into our UFC Apex studio. Brendan Fitzgerald with UFC under better call, the Irish Dragon Felder. In 2022, including Dana White's Contender Series, Road to UFC, and of course, a robust UFC schedule. There were 58 total events. That is the most ever. When you think back to 2022, Paul, what will you think of? I think it was busy and <laughs> awesome and a lot of drama and a lot of upsets and those being included in the title fights that we had this year. I mean, right at the end of the year, obviously, you know, the middleweight championship changing hands, Kamaru Usman and Leon Edwards, the welterweight belt changing hands, and just some incredible events in New York City and fight of the nights, just some absolute back and forth battles. And I just think we're seeing the stock of these fighters raise up to that next level, right? This next generation of fighters can do it all submissions, wrestling, grappling. They're growing up in the gym, and it's really starting to showcase. Well, UFC Honors presented by Toyo Tires is the UFC's official annual awards programming, uh, recognizing the athletes and the moments and the events that were in a year. Later on in the show, UFC President Dana White has two categories that he specially chose, and uh, we'll reveal the winners of those awards later in the show. First. Uh, the Fan Choice Awards are these, and these were announced on social media as voted by you, the fans. Knockout of the year and comeback of the year. Who else? Leon Edwards at UFC 278. The submission of the year was Islam Makachev's championship moment in Abu Dhabi. The event of the year, Madison Square Garden, where it always seems to get crazy at UFC 281 with Adesanya and Pereira in an epic fight in the main event. And the debut of the year came in Paris, France, where we debuted in France. And Abus Magomedov debuted with an impressive knockout of Dustin Stoltzfus. All UFC Honors Award winners will receive this trophy celebrating their achievement. First, let's zero in on the knockout of the year. And we just showed you Leon Edwards at UFC 278. We will remember Salt Lake City for all that it was and uh, the event that it was and the fight going one direction and then the shot heard around the MMA world by Leon Edwards yeah. to deliver him the UFC title. And it's kind of like we were talking about before the show began, right? Everybody remembers where they were, whether they were looking at this happen or had to pop their head up and realize what had just happened. Listen, Leon had a couple of moments in this fight, but Kamaru Usman was dominating this fight, getting his takedowns. He looked just as good on the feet, landing significant strikes, doing some damage, but just the control. And then this! Head kick that Leon sets up with that fake left hand, followed with that left kick upstairs. And I mean, just a picture perfect head kick. When you dream about knocking your opponent out, leading up to a fight, as a UFC fighter myself back in the day, I mean, that that is how you imagine ending a title fight in the end of a fifth round. You're on the you, you know you're on your way to losing, and then you pull that out. Yeah. And he set it up, and he got a tons of motivation from his corner. It was just one of those moments you will always. Remember that UFC history moment. Even like if that. that was your UFC debut, to have a flush head kick like that and a knockout, a highlight of that caliber on your reel, <laughs> but to do it in a championship fight. And then, of course, made extra special by when it happened. 56 seconds left in yeah. the fight, Paul. The comeback of the ages for yeah. the and, and that just goes to show you that when you're at this level, these athletes can pull it out. I mean, they're getting so good. The cardio is there, but the corner work too, you gotta give the credit to Leon's corner here. They did not doubt that he was capable of going out there in that fifth round in a fight that he was clearly losing on all the judges' scorecards, and they knew that he had what it takes to pull it out. Even the timing of how John Attic is saying he's not cut from that cloth, and then boom, he pulls off that head kick. I mean, to me, it's it's one of the top five, if not top three, greatest UFC moments and knockouts in, in all of its history. Well, they call him Rocky Edwards, and is certainly a oh, fitting ending. I mean, and then the nickname to back it all up, too. championship story for Leon Edwards accepting his award for knockout and comeback of the year. What's up, everybody? It's Leon Rocky Edwards here, UFC welterweight champion of the world. Um, I want to take this time out to say thank you. To all the fans that's, that's voted for me for knockout of the year and comic of the year. Um, even though comic of the year wasn't my main aim for the year, I want to say thank you to all the fans again. Um, it truly means a lot. Next year, I look to defend my belt and still pound for pound headshot. Bang. 
legendary moment and uh, what a message from Leon Edwards. Of course, the big question is, what does he do next to follow that up? Certainly a lot of eyeballs will be on him, but this, of course, is the show where we look back at 2022. Let's continue with the submission of the year, and that went down in Abu Dhabi. Islam Makachev against the all-time submissions leader in UFC history, Charles Oliveira. Well, Islam Makachev got it done. He realized the championship moment. He's the, the protege of one Habib Nurmagomedov, and he gets it done in Abu Dhabi. And not only did he get it done, but he went out there, he dominated the fight on the feet, he dominated on the cage, he dominated on the mat with his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu to take out Charles Oliveira, who goes down holding the record for most submissions in UFC history and do that in Abu Dhabi. It was incredible to see that, to see Habib be able to hoist him up in the air with that belt that he had held for so long to pass that on to his protege was unbelievable. What do you think of a moment like that for a guy like Islam Makachev, who many were saying is an eventual champion? Ultimately, he gets crowned and makes good on what a lot of people expected of him. Yeah, you know, he just, he lived up to everything that we thought he was capable of, but did it even in, in more impressive fashion. I really thought, I called that fight, I thought Charles Oliveira was going to put up more of a fight. I thought it was going to be back and forth. I, I, I thought there was a dang good chance that Islam was still going to pull it off and become the champion, but I think we expected a little bit more. He went out there, looked good on the feet, controlled all the grappling exchanges, and then to be able to sub him like that, and it was quick. That just shows the squeeze and the strength that these guys have coming out of that Dagestani camp with Khabib. It's unbelievable. He tapped immediately to that, and we've seen him tap people with that submission before. You just look at his back when he's in the middle of that. Yeah. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> it wouldn't feel no good <laughs> on the bottom of that. Uh, of course, uh, he now goes on the road to fight Alexander Volkanovsky to try to defend that 155-pound title. If you know anything about the UFC, you know that when we go to the world's famous arena, Madison Square Garden, every November, we bring the goods. That was no different. The event of the year, UFC 281. Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira throw down in an epic fight. Another comeback, come from behind victory, if you will, for Alex Pereira, who takes the belt off of Adesanya. And you know, we talk about the Kamaru Usman and Leon Edwards fight. This fight, a little different, right? That one was much more back and forth. But again, it looked like Israel was gonna pull that off, and then Pereira does what he does best, goes out there and lays hands on chins and puts people out. Michael Chandler, I mean, you know, Dustin Poirier, unbelievable, the knockout there with Frankie Edgar on his retirement day. So sad, but yet you get to see somebody on the up. That fight had it all. That whole card was unbelievable. And I got to watch that pretty much as a fan. I was working the desk for that event to sit down there on the floor yeah. and feel the energy from that crowd with those fights going on, in particular, the Poirier and Chandler fight. I mean, Dustin Poirier just lives for those kind yes, of moments. Does. So does Michael Chandler. Right. He doesn't know how to be in anything other than an absolute all-out war. What can you say about the atmosphere of a Madison Square Garden, what it does to the event? It, it, it is different. It's just different. When you show up from the fight week, you know, you arrive in New York, you're walking around the city, you're right there in Midtown, you're walking around on Times Square. All the UFC fans are outside the hotel. They know where everybody's going to be. You can feel the energy, and you can see it on the fighters when they make that walk in MSG, they mean business. They're all going out there to put on the best performance they've ever done. They're all going out there to collect those checks. I uh, have to shout out Zhang Wei Li, who got oh. her strawweight championship back over Carla Sparza. With a that submission that she kind of like improvised. It was <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. So uh, we'll hear from Zhang Wei Li in a little bit as well, but not for that event. Meanwhile, we'll go to the debut of the year. Paris, France, we debuted there as a promotion, but it was a debut fighter representing Germany, Abrus Magomedov, and you can't do it any better than this in terms of breaking onto the scene in the UFC. Yeah, Abus is a guy that had a lot of success outside of the UFC and finally makes his debut against Stolzfus and wastes no time, goes across, kicks him square in the face, busts his lip wide open. The fact that Stolzfus didn't go down right there, but then he just follows it up. It's just, I mean, I was cage side for that. The impact of that front kick followed up by these just monstrous punches. He's got great wrestling as well, good jujitsu. This guy is a beast for that weight class of 185, and he's also just well-rounded and a fun fighter to watch. I was spoiled last year. Yeah, I got nine. the call of these. <laughs> I was going to say 19 seconds for the knockout. The, the debut in Paris, France, too. That had to be a special. And the crowd cool. there, you want to talk about the energy in, in Madison Square Garden. Paris, that place was insane, man. Yeah. The crowd was going crazy. When you think of France, you don't necessarily think of wild, rowdy, crazy crowds. Right. They were. Well, uh, we'll see Lots how they follow up. Years like in that. the making.
to get to Paris, France, and the UFC did so in 2022. Won't be the last time. We mentioned at the top of the show, UFC President Dana White picks specific winners in special categories of two uh, UFC Honors Awards. Here are the nominees for Fight of the Year. He hit him with the right hand. Another right hand for Chandler. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy, he's in trouble. He's, hurt he's in real trouble. Oh, oh, big right hand. Oh, big shot by Dustin. Oh, oh right from oh, Chandler. Oh, him again. He hit him again. Oh! 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 my goodness, he picked him up. Oh! Oh! my, oh! my goodness. Oh! 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 What a fight. Uh, good job. My heart's uh, in my chest right now. So. Mine too. This is the most highly anticipated matchup in a long time. Oh, oh wow. wow. Straight right hand drops Burns. Oh, big Look crowd strikes right now from Burns trying to fire back. Burns trying to swing from his back, which is crazy. The great list of nominees for this year's President's Choice UFC Honors Fight of the Year. And of course, there were so many memorable fights in 2022, but there can only be one winner. It is my absolute honor to announce that this year's selection goes to Gilbert Burns, Hazmat Chemayev. Now, of course, you'll remember it was UFC 273. The scene was set in Jacksonville, Florida, and it was toe-to-toe -to -toe action for three rounds. The first round, Hazmat Chemayev proving that he was really ready for his first test against an always game Gilbert Burns. He walked away the winner of that first round. In fact, all three judges had him up on the scorecards for that one. Gilbert Burns battled back in the second, but ultimately it was Hazmat Chemayev in the third to walk away and keep his O intact. Now, congratulations to those winners, but we have to also say a, a special shout out to Yuri Prohashka, Glover Teixeira. That epic war five rounds ending in a submission by yuri with just seconds it will go down 
as one of the greatest fights in 205 history. Of course, we mentioned there can only be one winner. That's Gilbert Burns, Hazmat Chemaev, and here's more from our winners this year. What's up, guys? Gilbert Burns, we're here, and I just got the news. My fight got the UFC honors. My fight with Hansa Shimaev, April 2022, was elected one of the best fights, and I got the UFC honors for it. So I'm very happy. Thank you, UFC. I love the company. Thank you, all the fans. You guys are the best. And here to stay, you know, 2023 now. Looking forward to give you guys another fight of the year. Let's go. Thank you guys so much. We keep going. Let's go. Thank you, Dana White. Thanks, my fans. And we're coming soon. Take the belt, 2023. Oh, word there. And certainly respect with each of these guys. Gilbert Burns was the first person to make Hamza Chimaev look human, Paul. Yeah. And uh, did so at welterweight, which, of course, Chimaev is now flirting with middleweight. And who knows what he's going to do next. Gilbert Burns' stock went up despite not winning that fight. Yeah, 100%. It's one of those things. When you're so counted out and people think that Shabayev is the next coming, he you know, can't be beaten, he's too strong, he's too aggressive, he's too mean. And Gilbert Burns just had a chip on his shoulder that entire fight. Whether he was on his back, fighting his guard, throwing hammer fists, throwing punches, he just wanted to prove the entire time to Hamzat, I am here and I'm not going anywhere. And obviously, he landed that big right hand and the uppercuts and was able to put him down. I think we're looking at some of the highlights here. It was just back and forth. And Shemaev, I think, maybe underestimated him a little bit. But I think he also wanted that kind of a fight, right? He talked about that, that he wants to be in these wars. He wants to be in those battles. He's a true fighter, and he got to show that. It's one thing to go out there and finish everybody. But we don't really trust you to become a champion someday until you really get tested. And he's been tested. So I'm very excited to see what 2023 is going to hold for Shemaya. And for both of those guys, UFC 273 in Jacksonville, Florida last April was when that one went down. This is UFC Honors presented by Toyo Tires. And there is one more award to give out by Dana White. Here are the nominees for Performance of the Year. A different approach from Andrade. Not forward pressure. She said, I need to be more tactical in this fight. Kick got to the chin. It's not what we usually see from Andrade. Andrade has been known to blitz forward and throw caution to the wind. Oh, right cross. Andrade decides to close the distance. Oh, this is. Look for an arm triangle. Oh, look at this. Standing no arm way. Triangle. Standing arm triangle for Andrade. Can she get her down? Does it matter? Oh, my oh! God! I was talking about getting her to the ground. Jessica Andrade. Wow, that looked tight immediately. Strawweights, she has returned. Oh, Chandler caught him with a left hook there, though. Oh. oh, he hurt him again. He hurt him again. Oh, oh not beautiful oh, my take down. Beautiful Did take down. That was a beautiful double leg there. Oh, oh boy. Runs him over on the ground and pound. Fantastic round one. Whoa! Oh! Out cold! Oh! With a front kick Whoa! to the face oh! to knock out El Kukui! How about Iron Michael Chandler? Wow! Oh, oh that's a huge shot! This could be it! And Molly senses it. And Molly does not care. She's going to go for it. She's going to swing. Oh! There it is again. Look how confidently she's fighting tonight. She's like a shark in there at the moment, Michael. Now she really is. I mean, but that's the way she always fights. Oh, Ooh. nice. Molly's having a lot of success with that right hand. Oh! Oh, oh my word! Wow! What an unbelievable moment for me, Paul Molly. That is absolutely bonkers. What an inspired performance from Molly McCann. This is where Ray Lee had a lot of success in fight one. Look at that takedown. Oh, they big shots. Big shot. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Gets through for Sean Ray Lee. <laughs> Listen to the crowd. Ray Lee is beating her up. Oh, and again. That's a big shot. Oh! oh spinning back oh, fist! Oh, that's it! Oh, oh, the oh, check, and that'll do it! Sean Wei Lee putting a capstone on the rematch! Oh, oh my god! Oh, 
heavy kick. Spinning attack to the body now from Cheeto Vera. Oh, that's a nice head kick. See, and this is where Cheeto starts to get ahead, is when he starts landing those kicks, gets his rhythm. Oh, it hurt him bad. That would hurt him bad. Cheeto stalking his prey. There he is again. Unbelievable output. Cheeto hasn't got a mark on him. And on the flip side, Rob Font's face is falling apart. Oh, oh wow! Oh, the heel straight upstairs. There it is again. He's hurt. Once again, late in the round, Font on wobbly legs. Heidi Andrew back here. And those were the nominees this year's UFC Honors President's Choice Performance of the Year. Another stacked category, but there can only be one winner. This year, the Performance of the Year goes to Zhang Wei Li. You'll remember this fight, UFC 275 in Singapore, the rematch with Ioana Yunjacek, and it was set to be a classic throughout the first round. Then in the second round, Zhang Wei Li landed a perfectly timed spinning back fist to put the former strawweight queen out and close the chapter on this storied rivalry. Now, I'd be remiss to not mention some of the other names on this list. Of course, Molly McCann and her epic finish over Luana Carolina, blowing the roof off that building in the O2 London, of course, her home. And then Michael Chandler, that front kick to Tony Ferguson's face, knocking him out, uh, absolutely spectacular. No one does that to Tony Ferguson. So there were a lot of memorable moments, a lot of great performances, but a Zhang Wei Li who walks away the winner, and here she is. <laughs> Thank you, UFC and Dana, for honoring me with the Performance of the Year Award. 2022 has been a great year for me to grow as a fighter and to come back to be a champion again. I want to thank everyone who supported and believed in me. Thank you. Well, Zhang Wei Li is a champion again heading into 2023. The fight that got her the title shot at MSG went down in Singapore. And uh, we've known for years now that Zhang Wei Li is a top caliber athlete, especially in MMA and at the highest level. But that spinning back fist from somebody who knows something about a spinning elbow or a spinning back fist, what do you, what do you think? Oh, man. I mean, and to do it in a rematch against one of the best female strikers in UFC history, to land that move is unbelievable. And just so well timed. She's so strong. She's so fast. She's so athletic. And we've just seen so many improvements in her game. But this fight, the first one was insane. Then she comes out and just puts a stamp on it and lets her know, um, look at that. Oh, I mean, there's no answer. When you flatline somebody straight to the canvas and they're like, you know what? Yeah, it's done. That's a beautiful spinning back fist. Well, that was at uh, UFC 275 in Singapore, the rematch of their epic clash at UFC 248 in March of 2020. And for Zhang Wei Li, she is uh, a champion that's held the belt twice now. And that division is as stacked as it gets on the women's side of things. Yeah, it's going to be uh, very interesting to see how things play out in 2023. And I think she has the ability to hold it for a while now. And I think when you first get that belt and it slips through your fingers and things don't go your way, you lose a little bit of confidence. But now with those two performances that she's had to end her 2022, I, I think she, she could definitely become a champion that holds onto that belt for an extended period of time. We shall see. Speaking of 2023, UFC honors. We will sit here at the beginning of 2024 and we'll be handing out these awards to the performances and the fighters and the knockout and the submission of the year in this coming year. Paul's reaching for it right now. If you want a comeback fight, maybe you can win one of them. Yeah, right. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not getting one of them if I come back, <laughs> unless it's, you know, old guy of the year. Um, <laughs> we'll see if that, they institute but... that category. <laughs> but uh, for, for thinking ahead, who do you see as far as contenders for this award in 2023 as we look ahead? There are a lot of guys, right? Yes, we were kind of, while, while the interviews are going on, there's, there's many names to be discussed, but I think you got to mention Ilya Taporia. This guy, everybody's talking about him in the featherweight division. He's an animal, man. He's got unbelievable jujitsu and fantastic striking and just got that meanness that you want to see from a true contender. Hamza Shemaev, is he going to go 185? Is he going to be at 170? We don't know. Uh, Chido Vera, you know, and just the whole 135 pound division. That's the division people really need to be looking for in 2023. My buddy Bilal Muhammad, I mean, he's just had an unbelievable 2022. And now 
Let's see where he goes from here because now you are at the tippy top of a division. You're calling for all the shots. You're making all the noise. You're doing the right things. I'm curious to see where his year is going to go in 2023. We could definitely be handing one of them out if things go according to plan for Mohammed. So th that's just a few. I yes. Mean, as you said, there's a lot of names. The I'll heavyweight division? There's what, where rumors is that of go? Francis Ngannou and John Jones. Is John Jones Can you imagine back? what that might produce? Stipe, what's he doing? Cyril right. Gans throwing his name into the hat. The heavyweight division is kind of crawling its way back up to, to be something that we need to be looking at. Also, Sugar Sean O'Malley has climbed into championship contention, new territory. As you mentioned, the bantamweight division, that division. is mm. stacked. UFC honors presented by Toyo Tires. Paul, it's a nice look back on 2022. Fun. For more fun. information, you go to UFC.com slash honors for all the info on this award and beyond. 2023 should be good, but of course, it has a lot to live up to after a record-setting year in 2022. For Paul Felder, Brandon Fitzgerald, we will watch it all unfold this year right along with you. Thanks for watching UFC Honors.